Speedrunning is always a very intricate part of video games. It takes the developer's vision of what the game should be, how it should operate, and what rules are set, and bends it down like a Salvador Dali painting. Speedrunning has, is, and always will be a small but dedicated section of gaming communities that sometimes can turn into large groups. Some developers hate speedruns, while others love them. But one thing about speedruns is that they're usually for games that require a single player and have zero potential updates or allow players to use an older version of the game. The reason for that is to get players running that feeling that nothing will change. Everything will be the way it was outside of RNG itself that can affect the runs inside of the set game. So let's focus on one of the most unique games to do speedrunning and one that breaks these unwritten rules. A live service game with six players instead of one. Let's go back to Destiny 1, and more specifically Wrath of the Machine, for a glimpse at one of the hardest activities in the game, the raid, that has now been completed in just 14 minutes and 20 seconds, and the journey it has taken to come this far. Something to note before we get started is that Destiny 1 technically is no longer a live service game, and as of the Age of Triumph update back in 2017, has received no further attention. So without further ado, let's talk about Wrath of the Machine and the world record progression. footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Hey guys, I'm gonna cut straight to the chase because I know you guys don't like it when the videos take too long to get to the actual subject matter. I just wanna really quickly say, g Subs has a brand new flavor, the Mango Meta. It's by far my favorite. You can use code EVAN at checkout and that'll get you free shipping worldwide. Also, I moved my store over to Teespring instead of Designed by Humans. I like the quality a lot better. And if you're wondering why I haven't uploaded a video in the past week, it's because this video took me a lot of time to do research on. I had a lot of background things going on, got some new audio equipment, and I got this brand new monitor that I'm excited to tell you about. Let me introduce you to the BenQ EX2710, a 27-inch, 144Hz FreeSync and HDRI monitor. This absolute sexy beast of a monitor has three main features that I have noticed since streaming with it. Number one, color vibrant. I can see space visible to the background better than I ever have, helping me determine an object from its background. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, it makes a world of a difference. Number two was the lighting and more specifically the light tuner, which lets you choose up to 20 different color options and find the one most vibrant to what you're looking for. I'm gonna be honest, I really like this feature. I love the variety that they have to offer with it. And number three, which goes hand in hand with number one, was the black equalizer. One thing I really, really dislike when I play games is not being able to see dim or darkened areas in games, especially when it's bright outside, so you get that glare. When it's dark, even then, I mean, I hate not being able to see it. So the equalizer being able to show me enough without overexposure made a world of difference. Add all this with the free sync to not have any screen tear and 144Hz refresh rate, and I'm telling you, this monitor is an absolute unit. Thank you so much to BenQ for sending me one, and if you want to check it out yourself, I left a link in the description. Enjoy the video, guys. I'm going into this partially assuming you know how this raid works before I get started breaking down some key mechanics in this. If you don't, I highly recommend you watch my video on this raid, which goes into detail on how encounters work. But even if you didn't watch that video and are new to this channel, I will try my best to guide you along because there is a lot going on here. Wrath of the Machine was the six player raid activity released on September 23rd, 2016, and it was originally cleared by Team Redeem in just over two hours on day one. But this raid truly attracted some serious love for being fast-paced and everyone on the team being in charge of moving together as one unit throughout. 
The raid has five encounters, not including the in-between jumping puzzles, and lots of nuance in tackling each one. The first and second encounter are the same boss with slightly altered mechanics. The third encounter, the Siege Engine, is the most unique, with parts needing to be returned to the vehicle before time runs out, and the final room having a lead-up balls throw mechanic into a great final boss fight. I want to lay out a disclaimer that some of this won't make sense unless you've played this game yourself, and unfortunately this video would be too long if I broke down every little thing, but I will try to do my best to showcase everything in a way that would make sense to anyone watching. Wish me luck, and here we go. Okay, so after Wrath of the Machine was cleared, by the end of the week, speedruns had emerged and the first notable time posted was on October 10th, 2016, when runners Cruelty, Dark, Glad, ITI, Jazz, and Rowan recorded a 23 minute and 20 second run of this raid. In this run, Titans only ran the spark charges in the first encounter because they could use a tech called Titan Skating to move faster. Titan Skating is a term used to describe how Titans move so fast yet so close to the ground, like they have blades on their feet. The idea is actually to keep your agility as low as possible and time your glides to be as low to the ground as possible using the momentum off of the ground. The exotic Twilight Garrison helps a lot with this as it allows the player to get a burst of momentum forward and carry that momentum into their skate and overall for changing direction this exotic is great. For damage on this encounter, the team used a debuff specific to titans called Melting Point to do 50% extra damage and they used the Destiny Classic Rocket Launcher Gallahorn for damage too. Moving forward to Vosik Phase 2, the team used another Destiny Classic for the kill on this boss. Sleeper Simulant and the Golden Gun Hunter Super with the special exotic helmet, Celestial Nighthawk. Celestial, for those who don't know, takes all three Golden Gun shots and compresses it into one large shot. Tether and Melting Point were also used here, but Melting Point was preferred because the Tether only applied a 33% debuff. For the Siege Engine, the encounter was run normally but with Titans using hammers to clear adds out of their way near the beginning. Everyone picked up the parts whenever possible to get them onto the large siege engine. These parts are on a timer and slow you down when you pick them up of course, and add in slowing mines and adds and a great run can turn into mush if you're not careful here. Once this encounter was cleared, five players ran forward to the next encounter with the last person staying behind and riding the siege engine off the wall. The reason for one player staying behind on the siege engine is because the game will kill you if you go too fast because technically you're still in the last encounter and it just defaults to a wipe screen to prevent any unintended consequences from happening. For reference on hard mode Wrath of the Machine, this is what stopped Team Redeem from grabbing a world's first. On this run, Charges at Axis Phase 1 were thrown pretty slow as compared to runs we will discuss later, and during Phase 2 of Axis with damage, the team used Tether, Sleeper Simulant, and Snipers to damage Axis, killing him in two damage phases. You see how wordy this one is already becoming? Well, good, because now you know each encounter and have an idea of what they look like and how they operate. This world record wouldn't last for long as it would be snatched by Slayer Ridge, a Death Card, R-Pots, Travesty, Insanity, and Epic Cookies, only 3 days later with a new time of 20 minutes and 44 seconds. The main reason for the time shaves were different choices in damaging Axis with the exotic Dark Drinker's sword instead of snipers for a one phase of damage. At the Siege Engine, hunters using the perk in their skill tree called Keen Scout could crouch walk with Siege Engine parts much faster. While the three hunters completed the siege engine, the three titans waited in a single file line at the final wall the siege engine crashes through, waiting for an invisible barrier to be lifted only after all of the parts had been put into the siege engine. Also, the three hunters went to orbit and waited on three titans to make it to the next encounter. The reason for this is that titan skating is much faster and all players must be present to get to the next room in this raid. The time was seen as very impressive and lasted for over a month until November 15th came along and the team of Glad, ITI, Cruelty, Dark, 
Jazz and Modern Tryhard would land a time of 20 minutes and 13 seconds, with the most notable time saves being Mexus dying early on the siege engine, so the ramp never went up, and Axis final stand ending almost instantly with three Celestial Nighthawk shots. Now the first sub 20 was done by Cruelty, Jazz, Baxley, ITI, Dark, and Senior Snubby on December 28, 2016, where the biggest time saves were from pushing players holding parts with swords and throwing bombs faster at Axis Phase 1, as well as mostly having a clean run. That run was the best for about two more months until a huge time save was created at the Siege Engine by a player named R. Potts. Three hunters each grab a part with Shade Step, and as soon as they drop and move while crouched with Keen Scout for bonus speed, all three had the exotic helmet Graviton Forfeit equipped to accomplish it. The hunter who comes across the right side beam with the engine block gives their part to a pair of two titans who will take it together until the part had been put in. One of these titans has cleared every mine and placed a bubble near the end while the other places a bubble for safety on the bridge. The Titan clearing the mines has enough time to clear all of them before the Hunter passes the engine block to the other Titan and completes his movement. The Hunter carrying the warhead will pair with the third Titan who places a bubble on the opposite side of the right side beam for safety. The last hunter with the drive shaft will pair with the first hunter who carried the engine block and passes it on to the two Titans. So basically, that sounds like word soup, but it means they will have 10 seconds of downtime where neither of them can move the drive shaft. However, the hunters are fast enough with Keen Scout, Shade Steps, and Sword Pushes to catch up to the other pairs. All three pairs are pushing their partners with swords to put the parts in before Mexus even spawn. With this strategy and faster movement all throughout the raid, the team of Cruelty, Jazz, Dark, Senior Snubby, Baxley, and Nguyen were able to get the first ever sub-19, and all the way down to 1839 on February 26, 2017, and then improved on by this same team on May 15, 2017, using a new strategy at Axis Phase 1 where a single bomb can hit two different SIVA cores. Sub-19 may have first been completed in February of 2017, but sub-18 was done on August 1st of 2017. The main time saves were in Vosic Damage, where instead of using Sleeper Simulant and Nighthawks, the team of Scrub, Whammy, Enmark, Maythomp, Money Shot Chain, and Big Hangry used shotguns with Final Round. Final Round is a perk that does 33% more damage on the final shot. So by reload canceling and firing only the final round, the team was able to do more damage. The shotgun strat for damage also constantly stuns Vosik, so no boss stomps can happen to you. One player must bait out a stomp for this to happen though. The other time save was organizing the first encounter so everyone stuck to a section. This was done by creating a color chart and numbering each person to a zone where charges were to spawn. Every charge on the map is part of a group of four, meaning if a pink charge is grabbed, it will respawn in one of three other spots. Knowing exactly where the charges would end up after grabbing them helped cut down on unnecessary first encounter time fat. This color chart would prove to be incredibly useful and it was used in every run since it was created. The final time save was with Axis Phase 2 where a hunter was to swap to a warlock after the siege engine. This was for two main reasons, the perk Viking Funeral and Song of Flame, the latter of which requires a Warlock to activate their Solar Super. These perks gave a 15% increase to boss damage and a huge increase to ability recharge which allowed for abilities to be spammed 10 times faster, like Solar Titan Thermite Grenades. So that was the Warlock's role, but Thermite Grenades are actually a huge portion of what makes the damage on Axis beefier and allows for faster kills. Let me try to break this down as best I can. So Axis is counted as a vehicle in the game and as a result has a massive hitbox. Thermite grenades in the game pulse forward and deal ticks of damage. So depending on the placement of the grenade, more tick damage is possible. So if you hit Axis on a longer, well, Axis, 
then it will tick for around 115,000 damage instead of 90 to 100,000 damage. It may not sound like a whole lot of a difference, but almost 15,000 damage per grenade can absolutely be a difference maker here, especially with Viking Funeral and Melting Point providing such a strong damage multiplier. This landed the team the first ever one teleport kill in a speedrun. So instead of a one phase where Axis teleports three times for slams, this team killed him in only one total teleport. Keep in mind, the original world record that was posted had two whole damage phases, meaning six teleports. So let's go back to the current record. It would be later optimized by Baxley, Sam I Am, Cruelty, Sweatsicle, Lumpy Llama, and Indica on August 24, 2017 with a time of 17 minutes and 24 seconds and would not be beaten for almost a full year because of how impressive the run was, but also due to teams not running it as much since the release of Destiny 2 in September of 2017. Eventually though, the record would be beaten on August 22nd in a time of 17 minutes and 20 seconds by Cruelty, Jazz, Sam I Am, Scrub, Money Shot Chain, and Waka's Flockas. The main time save being Hunters going to orbit on transition to Vosik Phase 2 while Titans move forward, then popping a special ammo synthesis when being revived. A special ammo synthesis is an item in game which provides full special weapon ammo but has five minutes of cooldown after using it. The only time this would ever be expanded on would be in Destiny 2 when rally flags became a thing, but there was none in Destiny 1, so you had to choose primary, special, or heavy ammo synth and wait for five minutes. With that in mind, this gave them shotgun ammo for the kill on Vasek, and this record would be the only one for an entire year and wouldn't be improved upon until March 9th of 2019 where Axis Bake, Sam I Am, Waka's Flockas, Reaver, Eonix, and Atomic would grab the first ever sub-17 with a 1647. With this run, some serious new tech was introduced. Number 1. Emote Breaching there is a taunt emote inside of Destiny 1 which allows players to move through geometry because a piece of them is through the wall enough that the game registers that they're on that side of the geometry for a split window of time. This is executed in two different ways, the quick breach and long breach. Getting close to certain geometry in the game and having your left side pushed up against it while sitting still and crouching, then using your d-pad to use the taunt emote the player model will push their hands out to taunt. The player then uses that window of when the hands are extended to click in their left stick and sprint while also pressing B to get up and they move through that geometry. The other way is the long approach and on the right side or what's known as the backwards wall breach where players will have to do the same thing but wait on the second portion of the taunt emote to execute. From my own experience trying this, this is a very difficult trick to pull off and will require a few hours of practice before you can have somewhat of consistency with it. So it's almost a frame perfect trick, but maybe not quite. Hold on, do it again. Bro, fix your f***ing legs. I don't know. <laughs> We're doing the crab walk. Ew. No. Ew. Fix it. your Stop swimming, dude! He's doing yoga, dude. <laughs> this was used in the first encounter to send one player forward to Vosik Phase 2 while everyone else stayed back to fight the boss. Then after the retreat, returned to orbit. The other player then started Vosik Phase 2 and immediately wiped to allow the fire team members to join back in order to prolong the wipe screen. This strategy was very controversial because the in-game timer pauses for over two minutes while the whole fire team waits at the wipe screen. Now, this run also had six titans till the siege swap for the Warlock's Song of Flame later, and that is for the second piece of tech here, the part glitch. Discovered by Reaver, 
This glitch was to pop the Solar Titan Hammer Super, then wait for the super to get low, and then when it got there, the players had to throw the last hammer as they were picking up the parts to the Siege Engine. Basically what this does is it'll cause the game to think that you have the part in your hand without it actually being in your hand. It's like the game is paused in that moment and doesn't know how to make up its mind allowing the players to titan skate with the parts and swap to the part whenever they want. The other three titans wall breach all the way down to Axis Phase 1, while the three on the siege engine go to orbit and one of them swaps to a warlock. Now let's just pause for a moment. I know that sounds like a lot to take in, and it is, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to cover this story. The tech involved to get this record down is truly spectacular, and we still have a bunch of time saving left to do. Like May 11th, 2019, where the next record was to be set by Axis Bake, Atomic, Wakas Flakas, Mythic, Innate, and Reaver, and the time save here was having two players now going forward and emo breaching to Vosik Phase 2 while the other four completed the entrance and that the part glitch at the Siege Engine was completed much, much faster. This run was completed in 16 minutes and 21 seconds, with the sub-16 getting closer and closer. Now we're going to jump forward to July 29th, when Axis Bake, Reaver, Wakas Flakas, Mythic, Eonix, and No Good landed a 1604 and discovered how to time lock the new mission banner after the Siege Engine. So let's break this down. A time lock in Destiny speedruns is simply when the encounter or objective is being completed as fast as the game allows. In this case, three players stood at three different checkpoint spots to trigger the new mission banner as fast as possible, meaning the speed of the run was now determined by how fast the other half of the fire team could get to Axis. Destiny sort of works on triggers, right? So a player may be ahead of an encounter and onto another, etc., but the game will not allow them to progress unless the previous encounter has been beaten and some kind of trigger like a chest spawning, new mission icon, pops up. I hope that made sense, but if it didn't, let me know in the comments. That sub-16 minute run was sounding very nice, and on August 25th, 2019, it would be completed by the team of Axis Fake, Scrub, Locon M, Wakas Flakas, Reaver, and Judas, who landed a 1557. The save here was an emote breach from Vosik to the Siege Engine. This skip allows one player to breach during damage before Vosik dies. The skip is time to let the player advance to the Siege Engine and just beat out the joining allies back to Vosik if the team kills Vosik in time, therefore saving that much time. This run would be improved on the next day with a 15 minute and 40 second time with some optimization in the setup, but really the funny part about this run and why it was important to include was Scrub losing Xbox Live Gold and needing to be replaced by a player named All in All mid-axis phase one and still grabbing a world record in the process. I ran out of Xbox. This is nice. I don't have any money. The next record set on September 18th, 2019 was completed in 15 minutes and 35 seconds by Axis Bake, Scrub, Grandpa, Locon M, Judas, and No Good. This record introduced the special box skip. Similar to the emote breach after Vosik mentioned before, a player leaves the encounter before Vosik dies and goes above the parkour section. He uses the exotic Twilight Garrison to dash into a trigger only a few pixels wide, teleporting him right to the top of the special box at the wall. This lets him kill every ad sooner, saving over 30 seconds on the run. This run also had a Warlock the whole run to provide Viking Funeral for Vosik and Nova Bomb for the Siege Engine to add clear. This meant only two players go to Axis Phase 1 instead of three, since the three titans that are part of glitching would be too far behind and a warlock would be too slow to get to Axis before the new mission banner appeared. Remember this, the people who aren't going to Axis leave once the siege engine encounter is done, leaving everything up to the two titans.
Now, October 6, 2019 would set an improved record of 15 minutes and 21 seconds with power sliding being introduced. Power sliding is another tech in Destiny 1 because there is an artifact called Memory of Felwinter from the Rise of Iron DLC, which grants the player double amounts of strength and discipline for more grenades and melees, but at the cost of their super. So here's the cool part about this. If the player swaps to this artifact, then pops the Arc Titan Death From Above Super, the game will allow the super to be popped, but cancel the animation after a few moments because it takes the super away, allowing the player to power slide at ridiculous speeds. This is a really cool piece of tech that allows for players to skip the Oryx ship puzzle and is now used to speed to Axis. That would be the final run set in 2019, and it would take all the way until March 20th of 2020 to grab the next run in a sub-15 of 1458 by Axis Bake, Scrub, Wakas Flakas, Ionix, Jazz, and Reaver with a well-optimized run using the same tech. The same can be said for the 1448 run on April 2nd, the 1422 on July 14th by Danger Bakes, Duality, Grandpa, I'm Not a Zoomer, Shinju, and Twoozy, and finally, the current world record run of 1420 on July 15th of 2020. This world record run in 2020 by Axis Bake, Scrub, Wakas Flakas, Kylo Brent, Atomic, and Ionix contained the main final saves in these run, being a better Axis damage rotation on the final run. One player going to Axis also does not power slide until the long staircase at the Alienware computer. This means they need to skate nearly perfectly to beat the new mission banner and avoid a time loss. Now that is the current day run, down from the days of 2320 and now to a 1420. A 9 minute time reduction, and according to the world record team, a lot more to improve on including a sub 14 and killing Axis before final stand even happens, making him the first boss to ever have this done to them. Whew. So that is the world record progression, and I couldn't tell you one main reason for making this video. I wanted to try something new, show off what speedrunning in a game like Destiny are all about, and hopefully learn some stuff along with all of you watching this as well. I'd like to thank the world record team for helping me get the facts together on this one, and I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you did enjoy this type of video to the channel, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. If you want to see this type of content again, you can tell me on my Twitch and all my socials as well, at EvanF1997. And anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day. See you later. Mm.